afternoon. My name is Mary Turner, and I am president of the Minnesota Nurses Association, but I'll, more importantly, I'm an ICU nurse at Northmore in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. And we have today, we have uh, just a few of the 15,000 nurses that are on strike all across Minnesota. We've got two, three hospitals up in Duluth, and we've got 11 hospitals down here that are on strike for three days. We started at 7 a.m., and we will run till 7 a.m. on Thursday. Why are we out here? We are out here literally to save our profession. 51% of us could potentially leave the bedside as of next year. 51%, that's a health crisis. Okay, and our employers have told us at the table they want to make it all about money, that we're just looking for money. I'll tell you what, guys, if all we cared about was money, we'd all be traveling right now. Okay, because during the pandemic, as a COVID ICU nurse at North, I sat next to nurses who made $300 an hour. Believe you me, we don't make no $300 an hour. So if we really were only in this for money, we'd all be traveling right now. Right, nurses? Amen. Yep, yep. Amen. But it's not just about that. It is about being able to do the profession how we are obligated to do through the Nurse Practice Act. They're saying that there's no way we're going to have an arbitrator uh, you know, arbitrator language in our contract. I'm like, okay, fine, we're not going to win that battle. But here is a sentence that we want to have in our contract. If you want to change the staffing on a floor, you have got to get 51% of your nurses to agree to it. They don't want that. Their response back is, never will we let the nurses um, control the staffing grids. Never will we let the nurses have a say in our staffing on our floor. Well, that means they're telling us that we will not be allowed to do the job the way we are trained to do. And that is using our assessment skills and, and our knowledge and our know-how to keep the patients safe. So, guys, this, this is a fight for our very profession. And with that, I'm going to bring on our next, just to let you know what's going on in our hospitals. Um, I, I want to say one other thing about the hospitals this morning that we found out from Duluth. Um, found out on the line at North Memorial that our St. Luke's nurse is up there. The ICU nurses that had worked 16 hours were left on the floor because they did not send any replacement nurses to take report from them. They ended up staying almost 19 hours before they could get out on the floor. In my mind, they were being held hostage. They were being denied their right to get on the street and strike. That is their right as an American citizen, and they were being denied that. Luckily, just as I was telling my North nurses about that, Amber said they came out on the street. Praise the Lord, because I'll tell you what, that is, that is just unthinkable, and my heart went out to those nurses up in Duluth. So I just wanted to let you guys know that little story. But otherwise, uh, ambulances, if you have, I was down in Minneapolis, ambulances have been coming and going all day, all morning long. They're trying to transfer people here and there. I don't know what they're doing, but they're all over the place. But I'm going to bring up Melissa Cole, who can tell you a little bit what's going on at um, St. Paul Children's. Thank you, Mary. My name is Melissa Cole. I'm a registered nurse in the case management department at Children's Minnesota St. Paul campus, where I have spent nearly 34 of my 35 year career. This is a sad moment for myself today, my coworkers, but more importantly, the community and the families who rely on us to provide care for their children. The hospital would like you to think that this is all about money. That is simply not true. We are among the 15,000 nurses across the Metro and Twin Ports who are out here today to fight for a voice in our working conditions and improvement in the critical staffing crisis facing health care. We are fighting to put patients first before corporate health care greed. In the last three years, nurses at Children's have watched more than 500 of our most dedicated, highly skilled, qualified colleagues leave the bedside due to the moral distress of no longer being able to provide the care and quality they believe your children deserve. In the past two years, over 3,500 concern for safe staffing reports have been filed by children's nurses alone. That's more than any other m &A facility in the state. We continue to be forced to do more with less. This means that on over 3,500 occasions, 
A nurse has felt that they had an assignment that compromised the safety of our children, the standards of care. This is no longer sustainable. 36 hours ago, I sat at the table with children's nursing leadership for our 22nd bargaining session. 22 times my employer had the ability to do the right thing and put the safety of children first. Instead, they have committed to be uninterested in our proposals that allow nursing, nurses to have a voice in the development of safe staffing plans that would help retain and recruit nurses and that would improve the working conditions inside our facility. They were unwilling to respond to our latest proposal, instead walking away at midnight on Saturday night and then canceling bargaining sessions that we did actually have scheduled for tomorrow. This is what has forced us to be here today. Nurses are united as we have never been before. We are, we are united in fighting for our profession. We are united in fighting for a fair contract. We are united in fighting for the safe staffing that allows us to provide the absolute best care, care that we all deserve. Today is historic. 15,000 nurses out in the largest nurses strike in American history. However, we are not out here to, to make history. We are here to pave the way for the future of nursing and health care. Thank you. And then next is Brittany Levacari from United. Hi, my name is Brittany Levacari. I am an emergency room nurse at United Hospital. I would like to make one thing clear. Nurses want to be in the hospital today. Nurses are angry and disappointed that hospitals are continuing to choose profits over health care. We want, like I said, to be inside that hospital. We don't want to be walking the lines, but we're not willing to continue with the status quo. We are tired of not being heard. We are tired of not being able to provide for our patients the way that we know our patients deserve to be provided for. And I also want to make this very clear. The staffing shortages and crises within the hospital absolutely did not start with this pandemic. It started with lean management and staffing cuts. The pandemic just shed light on it and made it worse. We are the bottom line standing up, taking care of our patients. We will not allow our community to not be served in the way that they deserve to be served. I would like to bring up um, Representative Tina Liebring. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Representative Tina Liebling from Rochester, and I chair the Health, Finance, and Policy Committee in the Minnesota House of Representatives. I am in awe of the nurses who are working so hard to help Minnesotans when they are in need. This is a tough, tough profession. These people are doing it for all the right reasons. And so when they feel the need to walk up the job, leaving their patients behind, we know that this is really serious. This is really a public health crisis for Minnesota. When Minnesotans get sick, when there's a pandemic, where they have any other kind of health crisis, they depend on skilled and caring nurses to be available to take care of them. Hospitals without the nurses are just buildings. We all know that. So we have to be really attentive to this as a state. The uh, hospital administrations that are, um, these hospitals that are being struck right now have shown incredibly tone deafness, incredible tone deafness to the needs of their nurses. And this cannot continue. This is about all of us. This is about our loved ones. This is about our families, our friends, our communities. We need to be listening to the voices of nurses. They are at the bedside. The idea that we're gonna have so many nurses leaving the bedside that we have these shortages, I do not believe for a minute that this is about money. This is about how you're treated. Everybody knows right now how you're treated by your employer means everything. And the idea that nurses are treated as expendable is absolutely unacceptable. 
So I'm very proud to be here today standing in support of the nurses who are out on strike. And I call on the hospital executives to listen to them, to listen to them, to give them a voice in the interests of all Minnesotans. Thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce the great Senator Aaron Murphy. Good afternoon. My name is Erin Murphy. I am a licensed registered nurse here in the state of Minnesota, and I serve in the Minnesota Senate. I am proud, though disappointed, that we are here today. Uh, and I know, as the nurses have already given voice, that the registered nurses across the state who are out on the line today would much rather be inside the walls of the hospital doing the thing that they have prepared for, which is to care with high quality and excellence the Minnesotans who find themselves inside our hospitals. That they are out on strike is an extraordinary measure. That we are here together today is a signal that the hospitals have not taken seriously the concerns of the nurses, which they have been expressing far be before the pandemic and through the course of the pandemic, that the quality of care that they are able to provide given the way hospitals are choosing to staff is eroding. It is their professional obligation to raise their voices. They are licensed. They are bound by a code of ethics that requires them to raise their voices to say that they are not being allowed because of the way hospitals are being staffed to do the job that they need to do to provide the high quality of care that we have come to expect in the state of Minnesota. It is important that Minnesotans understand this, but I am here today to urge the hospital executives to come back to the table, to do the hard work that the nurses have been asking them to do, which is to make sure that our hospitals are adequately staffed and the contracts put in place the provisions necessary to retain that high quality staff. Our nurses are out here today, which means there are substitutes, temporary nurses caring for Minnesotans. Those nurses are licensed, but they are not the experts that the nurses out here are. Just like in a classroom when you have a substitute teacher, which happens from time to time, that teacher is not going to be the same as the person who knows their students, who knows the classroom, who knows the system. Our expert Minnesota nurses should be the ones caring for patients, and we need to heed their warnings that the understaffing that continues inside our hospitals is interrupting their ability to do their jobs with excellence. The business of health care and a budget for a hospital will not balance properly if nursing is not adequately staffed. You don't go to a hospital to lie in a bed. A bed in a hospital means a nurse, a registered nurse. There have to be enough registered nurses to do the care. The business of health care must center on care. And today, more and more, the business of health care is centering on profit and profit margin and return on investment. And a good hospital executive will know the best return on an investment in a hospital is high quality nursing care. And these nurses are out on the line today to make sure that their obligation as professionals is being upheld. And I stand with them in solidarity. Thank you. Any questions? No, we wouldn't be out here if they were. Um, like I said, 3,500 concern for safe staffings at children's, the two children's hospitals alone, right? And the concern for safe staffing, we brought those boxes to the legislature. We had a, what, a 12 to 15 boxes full that we, we put, we showed, and that's filled with, and every single one of those that are filled out is an unsafe situation. So no, we, do, we wouldn't be out here if our staffing was safe. Well, hopefully they, we, um, you know, they kind of, all of our employers kind of left in a huff 
you know, they chast, I don't know what happened at your table, but at the North table, um, you know, they kind of chastise us uh, for wasting their time and so disappointed in us and so um, downright offensive. So I would assume we're going to all want to get back to the table as soon as possible. But, uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to be waiting for their invitation or what, but we'll, we'll make the effort because we bargained all the way into, I think Children's was at the table till well after midnight. Fairview was at the table. The two Duluths were at the table. Um, and so we were bargaining well into Sunday, early Sunday morning. And so we did it as long as we could. And then the employers walked away and said, you know, we're done with you for now. But if there are no talks scheduled, and my understanding is there are none now, right. what happens Thursday? Well, that's where we make, you know, we put the, we go back to work, if that's what you're saying. We go back to work at, at the strike ends at 7 a.m. And we continue in our contract fight. If you're going to ask for strategy beyond these three days, that we have to go back as a group to figure out. So... We are hoping that it'll be enough to bring them back to the table. What's your advice for patients during this strike? Should they avoid these facilities if they can? I don't want to say that they shouldn't come to the hospital if they need to. You know what I mean? We're never going to we're never going to say stay home if you need to be at a hospital. It's their responsibility right now to see that people get the care when they walk in there. That's their responsibility. It is not the responsibility of these nurses standing on the sidewalk. Okay, that's why we gave them a 10 day notice. So I would never say that, don't go to the hospital if you need to, never. Do you wanna add something? Yeah. Like yeah. To Just to add to that, this strike can end at any moment if they would actually come to the table and settle a contract. That's right. We wanna be in there. So we wanna take care of the patients. We are committed to the community. We will end this strike if they come to the table and come to a fair agreement that the, the, that the nurses deserve and that also honors and protects us and our patients. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Yep, yep. I'm Brittany. Yep. Can one of you elaborate? What does that look like? Well, okay, I'll tell you one thing. So we heard about the concern for safe staffings. We want assurance in our contract that if a nurse uh, says that their patient assignment is unsafe that we are not disciplined. We've had nurses that have been sent home for refusing an unsafe assignment. We want some assurance that we can use our our intelligence and our and our education and our assessment skills to know whether our assignment is safe or not. We want that assurance. They don't want to do that. speak to that okay our understanding from our co-workers inside children's hospital that there are actually some units today that are better staffed than when we are in there yeah it's more important to them now than to to provide care on a daily basis with their regular employees who have been begging and pleading and filling out over 3,500 concern for safe staffing reports voicing our concerns yeah yeah and we've heard the same same stories everywhere that the staffing has never been better. They've been bragging about it all the days, these last few days leading up to the strike about how good their staffing is going to be. So it sounds like staffing is the sticking point because you've already decreased your wages over the day. We have, we have. Is there a number that they can throw out right now and you know, this will be done? Yeah, right now we'd settle for them um, bargaining what I fondly call the wage war in good faith. Up in Duluth, they haven't made a pass. They haven't come back with a counter in about four sessions, and it's almost as bad here. I think uh, Lina uh, threw out a 12%. We are at 11.5%, but they refuse to counter anything. And now up in Duluth, uh, I believe 27 was put across the table. So we're coming down, but they're not doing the other way. They're not, so they're not doing that fair. They think it's no big deal for us to bargain against ourselves, but God forbid they should bargain against themselves. That isn't the way it works, people. Potentially, I mean, we did try to do a common table 
that kind of fell apart. You know, they're kind of want to do, they're probably looking for that was somebody to, you know, somebody to settle kind of thing. You know, actually we would, I would have loved it if Children's or Fairview could have settled this contract over the weekend. But there are just certain things that, that we are looking for. And one of them is to be able to have the ability to, to um, have some say in the staffing on our floors. We're being denied that. Yeah, each table has their, we're all one organization, but we're all separate tables. What's the duration of this contract? It's a three-year contract. Are the, are the apps different in different hospitals? No, we've got some staffing and wages are, are what we would call our joint proposals. I mean, realistically, wages is always a joint proposal because you're not going to have Children's Minneapolis, St. Paul making more or less than United sitting right next door, okay? So that realistically is always a joint proposal. But we have insisted that staffing has to be a joint proposal too. That's the part they're having a real problem with. And when you talk about 29% or the 11 or 12% they're offering, is that an yeah. increase over one year or over the well, three-year Well, uh, I'm glad you asked that because they seem to keep putting it out there that way back when it was 39, we expected that all in one year. No, the 27% that was put forth in Duluth is over a three-year term. Right now, at um, the, it's at 12% here, so that's 5% the first year, 4% the second year, and 3% the third year. But the only, the only hospital system that's gotten that is Alina. <laughs> Correct. So I'm glad you asked that because they keep putting it out there, making it sound like we want the, you know, this all in one year. And that is so, but like I said, if this were truly about money, we would all be traveling right now because that's where the money's at right now. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I was, I, it was kind of a relief to me when July 1st came along. Our contracts were due June 1st and, and up in Duluth, they were due up June 30th. So come July 1st, we became almost 15,000 nurses. First time it's ever been done. I mean, we're hitting three metro areas, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and, and Duluth. Three level one traumas right now. North Memorial, Ascension St. Mary's, and then Minneapolis Children's. Those are all three, those are all level one traumas right now that are probably not gonna be working at the full capacity. I, I think uh, uh, at North, the, the uh, ambulances are going back and forth. I have, I have a feeling they're bringing people to HCMC. We're getting word that HCMC is filling up. You know? You put the, the 543, that's the Alina nurses proposal? Yeah, the, uh, the one at North was... Yeah, the hospital's proposal. I know, right? That was the hospital's proposal, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But then Alina has nothing to say about staffing. They don't even want to. Yep. Alina may have the highest proposal back to the nurses at all the table, but they don't want to even begin to talk to us about staffing. They keep telling us we will never give operational control to the nurses. We're not asking for operational control. We're asking to be heard. We're asking to protect our license. We're asking to protect our patients. We know that the care that we've been having to give inside this hospital since the pandemic isn't what the community deserves. The community deserves better and that's what we're asking for. Alina doesn't want to talk about it. This is not about wages. Wages is a part of it, but 100% staffing is the number one thing that we're fighting for inside that building. Yep. Yep. And I would like to add when the contract opened, the hospitals came to the MA and asked to do a wage only contract. They did not want to speak with us about staff, staffing. They did not want to speak with us about, wa about working conditions or retaining or recruiting new nurses to the profession. And as far as children's, we're at four, three and a half, and four percent is the latest offer from our employer. We have very little interest in decreasing our offer any anymore until our hospital talks to us about staffing that's what's important the care of children in our community is is the most important thing to us yeah. would you trade some of your wage requests for guaranteed staffing levels or guaranteed new hires 
Absolutely. That's why we have them as high as they are, and we haven't decreased it yet. Yeah. Until we get the staffing, then yeah. then let's talk wages. But until then, it's not about that. So if they okay. promised you so many more nurses, you would back off of your, your voice. Yep, and, and a say and a voice in the process in determining how many nurses are considered safe per shift. Yeah. Well, I want to bring up one other point because it's... I want to bring up one other point because they keep insisting about the mediator. They've been asking about that from day one. Day one they've been asking about that, wanting a mediator. Well, in our world, that's it's never been off the table to have a mediator. But a mediator is when you're coming close to a deal. Well, we're, we're way far apart with that. But here's what happens, and it's, this is what has happened in the past. Once the mediator comes in, they don't face us across the table. And so when they say that they wanted a mediator from the very beginning, in my mind, that means they never wanted to hear all of our stories are unsafe staffing. They never wanted to hear all of our stories of workplace violence. That's why they want the mediator, so they don't have to face their nurses. Well, I'm sorry, we're not going to make it that easy for them. Nope. Ah, we, we, like we had on Tuesday. Yeah, they canceled. We had one set up for Tuesday. They canceled on us. Alina canceled. Children's canceled. Everybody canceled. The hospitals did. Yep. If they came back and wanted to talk, of course we would. Absolutely. Of course we would. So. Good. Thank you.